All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so today is Tuesday, June 2nd. Uh, it's just after 9 a.m. in a somewhat sunny Seattle morning, um, actually, which is quite nice. We have lots of blue sky today, which it's been a while. Um, my name is Jennifer Cadence. If we have not met before, lovely to meet you. Uh, if you've been around for a little while, um, it's nice to see you again. Uh, today, I am joined by my colleague, Fong. Uh, Fong, if you'd like to do a quick introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Fong. I'm the product analyst on uh, the AppSheet product. Um, I handle a lot of the internal uh, analytics that we use and our user research. I'm happy to join today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Fong. Uh, and then we are still in work from home, home mode. I always like to mention um, my dog, Roxy, who is here with me. She can be a little vocal sometimes. So if you hear like a dog barking or petting, panting noises or something like that, it's not me, it's my dog. And I just feel the need to acknowledge that. Um, before we jump into our session uh, today, I'll, I'll post the agenda really quickly. Um, we just want to uh, take a quick moment and acknowledge that the world is pretty heavy right now. Um, we're still going through the COVID piece. Um, Fong and I live in Seattle, and there's been a lot taking place here, too. And we hope everybody is taking care of themselves during a really, really difficult time. Um, we are here for you if you need, um, in whatever capacity that might be. We want you all to know that you are supported uh, in whatever way this platform can do. Uh, I'm very active on the AppSheet community. If you ever wanna honestly chat about personal things, <laughs> feel free to send me a note um, in the direct message. We're all humans and we're all trying to get through a really difficult time together. And the best way we can do that is with empathy and our doors are open if you ever need. So just wanna take a moment to acknowledge that um, and then we'll go ahead and move into things. Uh, so first up is educational resources. So if you are new to the platform, we have a number of uh, publicly available free resources for you to leverage to learn how to use uh, the AppSheet tool. The AppSheet creator community is by far the most valuable tool that you'll find. There's actually a link uh, in the chat box for you, where, which will point you to a post for today's session. This is also where we will post a recording for today, as well as answer any follow-up questions that you might have um, or anything we're not able to address here. So please do check out that resource. Uh, within that um, community space, there is a really great learn how to use AppSheet post where, again, if you're new to the platform, uh, we have uh, a free Udemy course that you can take. It takes roughly 90 minutes. It helps teach fundamentals. Um, there's a great uh, how to design your application, which is something we're going to talk about a little bit today from a data capacity. Uh, and then making data work for you is another great resource, which you'll, you'll want to touch on after we um, complete our session today. For those uh, that English is not your first language, we're actually crowdsourcing uh, different educational resources for those in our global audience. Um, we have everything from Japanese to Russian. I think I saw French on there. I believe there's a, a resource for those in Thailand. Um, please, if you have a resource you'd like to contribute, feel free to add it to the thread. Um, if you are in need of services like this for yourself or your customer base or service delivery partners that you work with, this is another great resource for you uh, to access. So um, today for uh, we're going to be touching on some fundamental pieces. Um, there's a couple of quick announcements to make before we jump into this. So this office hours session, um, for those of you that have been around for a little while, this is something we do every couple of weeks. We tend to touch on like new feature announcements, um, which by the way, the color picker is live for those that have been asking. So do check that out. Um, feature announcements, any important platform information, we address Q&A pieces, but the topics we've covered have been a little bit all over the place. So what my goal is, is actually to turn this into more of a, a fundamentals foundational session. We might be increasing the frequency um, to maybe every week if people are interested in the coming, um, the coming months. Uh, so do keep an eye out for that. But I will also be adding an advanced session 
quite soon. So those that want to get into the deeper technical pieces, uh, those are, that are advanced users that have been on the platform for some time, do check out uh, that session. Stay tuned. We'll make an announcement in the um, creator community space. But the purpose of this office hour session will, again, be to address fundamental components, improve your foundational app building, provide announcements, and general Q&A pieces. So I just want to set the expectation with that. Um, so, moving on to today's topic, part of the reason Fung is with me today is he is a product analysis. Um, he is our data guy. Um, when I actually first started at AppSheet, he's the one that walked me through um, in one-on-one -on -one sessions how to properly structure my own data um, to ensure that I could best take advantage of my data structure to create really effective applications with AppSheet. And he's the expert, and I wanted to make sure um, that you all had access to this information too, because I personally found it very valuable. And so Fong is going to go over data design, um, tables, spreadsheets, connecting multiple data sources. He has some great tips, and then we'll take some Q&A at the end. All right, so um, intelligence is really important to address here. Um, as a starting point. You, you've all probably seen that AppSheet is considered the intelligence platform, right? You're like, what, what does an intelligence platform even mean? So by the broader intelligence umbrella, what we're referring to is AppSheet uses your data to design your applications. So where your data lives is completely separate from AppSheet. Our platform connects to your data and that data influences how your application functions, how your application works, what your users see um, when they interact with your application. And that's all done based on the information that AppSheet has been collecting over the years and helps predict um, certain needs you might have, view types based on categories and columns, um, et cetera. And those are all things we'll dive into a little deeper as we move along. Uh, Fong, did you have anything you wanted to add just on general intelligence before we go further? Uh, I think you, you covered a good uh, good overview of it. Okay, perfect. We'll keep moving. Uh, so this is where Fong is going to start to to take the lead a little bit here. So just from a really high level, uh, before we get into examples, data design understanding tables is absolutely critical. At the base level, a table is built of columns and rows. So you have your grid, but each column and row serves a different purpose. Each table must have a key. Um, we like to make a lot of bad puns about keys, but <laughs> it is very important. Uh, so Fong will talk about that a little bit as well. Um, you can add multiple tables to your applications, and then you can choose data from any source um, when you are building these applications. Uh, in terms of the multiple data sources you can select from, again, um, we're going to dig deeper into this a little bit, but here's just a quick list. Um, being part of Google uh, Sheets um, is a very common use case for us, as well as the MySQL uh, connection through your instance, but also Salesforce is an option, uh, AWS, there's, there's a lot of variety there uh, in terms of data sources that you can work with. All right, and now, uh, Fong, I'm going to send it over to you to talk about star schemas a little bit. Let me make sure you have privileges to show. Sweet. I... All right, perfect. We can see your screen. You are all set. Perfect. Thanks, Jen. So as many of you have known, uh, AppSheet is a great way you know, to create apps uh, from your data. And based on our, our research uh, in the past, uh, we found that the majority of the issues for especially new app creators um, tends to circle around like their, their data structure. So today we'll go over um, a way that you could organize your data in, a, in an app-friendly way um, so that you can get the most out of AppSheet and then uh, could potentially help you scale within the organization as well right, as your data sources grow over time and number of users and all that. So the, the walkthrough today is going to go over the schema that I, I like to use um, to help outline my apps and then uh, 
bring that schema into Google Sheets and then uploading that data over to, to AppSheet um, and see how it's interpreted. And then uh, towards the end, we'll, we'll um, connect you know, multiple data sources um, just to show the, the cap capabilities of that. All right, so uh, let's start the schema here. Um, so just a little background. The, uh, within data engineering, there's a pretty uh, common concept called the, the star schema. Um, so it, it is commonly used to structure your relational databases, right? And it's generally made up of multiple tables. Um, and the star schema allows you to build these relationships in a very, uh, very clean and um, easy to read way. Uh, so it avoids all these confusions of, you know, um, all these key mappings as could be hard to keep track of as your, your database grow. Um, then for this example, uh, we'll use, um, you know, just placing, uh, it's keeping track of your, your uh, office shares orders, right? Since many of us are working from home. So we'll just use this as an example to, to go over the different components of the, the star schema. So in our example, we have essentially four tables. Um, one to keep track of your customer orders, uh, one to keep track of your product, um, want to keep track of the sales associates who oversees the order and then um, the, the customer account table. So it allows you to reference who is purchasing, uh, who, who are placing these orders. And within each table, there are essentially um, three column types. And, uh, the first one is the primary key, which Jen alluded to. Uh, the second one is the foreign key. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit. And then there are the values. So as the for the primary key, in this case, you see that um, it's indicated in bold and a double asterisk here. So every table need a unique identifier. Um, and that's what the primary key represents. And I would suggest that your table should have this, right? Every row should have a unique identifier or else when you upload it into AppSheet, we'll use the row number as the unique identifier, which you know is not the most optimal way of organizing your, your data. And um, it, it, it will cause some friction when you're trying to map across different tables. So just make sure that your table, every table has um, a primary key. So in this case, uh, yeah, the order ID here is the unique identifier and each order has a unique ID. And then if you're looking at the sales associate table, it has a sales associate ID as a unique identifier, um, product ID for the product table, and the customer account table has the customer account IDs. So those are their primary keys. Then the other uh, column type are, are the foreign keys, right? Um, so these foreign keys are essentially uh, the bridge between your, your tables, right? Um, so if you're trying to map from one table to another table, you use that foreign key. And the foreign key is essentially the primary key for the table that you're trying to map to. So in our example, with the customer order table, there are three primary keys. One for the sales associate table, one for the product table, and then one for the account ID table, uh, the customer account table. So you know, the way you interpret it is this, for, for every single order that you have, you can use the sales associate ID to go to the sales associate table to identify the person who owns the order. Right? And similarly, you could use the product ID to map over to the product table to see which product was ordered. And then, you know, you could use the customer account ID to see who ordered this, uh, who, who placed this order. Um, and you could access their, their contact name, email, um, billing address, and their membership level. And then, uh, yeah, the last component here is the values, right? So values, um, it's pretty much any measurement or metric uh, within the table. So in this case, the total cost is, is, uh, is the value type here. It's just representing the uh, total cost of a specific order. All right. Um, so those are different components within the table. Um, but within the star schema then itself, uh, it essentially consists of two different types of table. Right. Uh, there's the fact table, and then there are your dimension tables. Um, 
the fact table generally consists of the measurements, metrics, or, or facts about some sort of business process. Uh, and that table is generally the center of just our schema. So um, a lot of the, the fact table would then contain these foreign keys, right? As you can see with in our customer orders table that they have foreign keys mapped into the other table. So this is our fact table. Um, and in regards to app sheet, the fact table and the purpose of the application you're trying to build usually go hand in hand. Right. In this case, we're trying to build an app to keep track of customer orders. So our fact table is the customer orders table. So if you're trying to build an app to um, keep track of your inspections, right? so then uh, your fact table would include uh, records for your inspections. So just make sure that those two go hand in hand um, when, when you're designing this. And since um, the fact table keep track of the, your business process, it will accumulate a lot more records over time comparing to the dimension table, right? As you do more orders or you do more inspections, this table is going to grow larger and larger in terms of the number of rows. And then as for the dimension tables, um, it's generally there to provide the labeling information to the objects that are being referenced by your fact table. Right? You, could, you could think of them as uh, descriptive information for your, for your fact table. So, uh, within this example, right? Oh, sorry. Right. Within this example, um, yeah, mentioned you could go to the dimension table to get more information about the sales associate. Go to the product table to get more information about the product, and so on. Um, these dimension tables generally be uh, they're, they're generally short and flat, right? Meaning that they wouldn't generate that many rows. Because for in this case, like you wouldn't be hiring a bunch of sales associate over time, right? That that table is going to grow uh, little by little, but you could actually store a lot of columns in in these dimension tables, right? So in this case, uh, for the sales associate table, we only have four columns, but you can see that you could include more information about sales associate, like their years of service, their pay, their education, and so forth. Right? Um, those columns might not be relevant for this app. But once you have a dimension table established, you could actually use it uh, in, you know, you could use that to be um, referenced in your other apps as well, right? Um, that might uh, find those columns to be of more relevance. So, and then, um, that actually brings me to my, my, my next point to go over like some of the advantages of the star schema. So Fong, uh, as you transition, um just a quick question for you uh, that just came through so uh, and this is a, a very important to highlight uh, the question is our app sheet or is the app sheet database a relational database or a dimensional model i would i would think of it more of like a relational database yeah because you're, you're essentially trying to uh build a relationship between these these uh different tables um and as you bring in more tables, you want to make sure the keys are properly mapping to each other, right? Um, and so the star schema will allow you to uh, kind of build that relationship um, that you need. Excellent, thank you. All right, uh, so that's the uh, general overview of the star schema. Um, and upon using this uh, to build my app, I noticed a couple of uh, advantages um, with it. The first one is that uh, it, it's pretty easy to understand, right? It's very clean in this case where you can see the, the mapping. So you, when you have like co-authors coming in or you're trying to troubleshoot your app, um, having this mapping in place allows them to easily interpret your data. Because um, a lot of times when I'm looking at other people's app, I could get lost, right? In terms of like what maps to what, where, where's the reference. Um, but having just an outline like this really, really helps with that. And when you're trying to troubleshoot, you could pinpoint where errors are, are coming up, right? Which joins, which table. Um, so that, that, that's the, uh, I, I think, idea um, around data management. Just keep it as simple as possible. Because um, once you scale, it just gets easier and easier to manage. manage right? uh, the second advantage, as I previously mentioned, is that um, since the dimension tables, they don't grow as quickly, right? Um, you could essentially keep these records of the dimension tables to use for other apps, right? 
it's essentially that would be like your single source of truth. Um, so when you're trying to scale AppShe within your organization, uh, other app creators wouldn't need to create, let's say, five different version of the products table because they're building an app related to product, right? They could simply reference this product table and everything you know about that product is uh, is there. Um, so it, it avoids uh, a lot of um, uh, repetitive work. And at the same time, when you have a single source of truth, it helps your you know other teams, your organization to essentially interpret the data in the same way. Because right? um, there's a lot of cases where if different teams are building their own tables for the same purpose, and then uh, there could be some conflicts or a lot of debates between the accuracy of the data. So to, to avoid all that, you could just have a single source of truth for these dimension tables um, that can be used across your organization, right? So like the, the, the product team could um, manage the product table, make sure it's up to date so that everyone can use it, or like the sales, so the sales team can manage the sales associates table and so on. And everyone building their app could just simply reference these tables as dimension tables, since they don't change as much. Yeah, and that, that's a really great um, point to highlight, Fong. For those of you that are in organizations that are scaling or you need to remain really nimble, um, one of the things that's really frustrating is when you find the same data source that's been manipulated or changed in a thousand different ways across your organization. It creates silos. There's a lot of issues that stem from it. So keeping a important single source, or excuse me, keeping a single source of truth um, in this way is really, really critical to helping your organization find success. So thank you for, for really highlighting that, Fong. Um, and then the uh, the last advantage that I, I've noticed when um, use this is that um, for your fact table, right? Your fact table is where a, a lot of the, the processing, a lot of the calculations take place in your app. So you want to minimize the size of the table, right? So in our example with the customer orders table, we wouldn't want to include the sales associate's name, the title, the manager, right, along with the columns from the product table, right? You're essentially going to end up with, I don't know, like 10 plus columns right, in your customer orders. And a lot of these columns are repetitive, right? If the same sales associate is filling out like 10 different orders, uh, you know, her name, her title, her manager is going to take up um, a lot of space. Um, so you rather just have that one. Uh, column that references data so you can minimize the number of columns right? because the more columns you have each row that you add will just get significantly larger and larger in terms of the table um, so by limiting the number of columns um, you could you know hopefully improve the processing time of your app and at the end make your performance Great. So um, just on that last piece Fong um, a question came in that maybe you can help with the distinction so as uh, somebody asked about the size of the database and the question is um, I would like to discuss how to measure the size of the database and how likely it is to reach the maximum capacity and any clue to use the benefit of AppSheet with larger databases and um, the reason this is a good place to highlight is there's often a misconception between what a, a table can hold and what your database can hold if you could touch on that for a moment yeah, so the limitation um, would be around what more of like your database is holding, right? Because we're just essentially the, the the platform that helps process this data back and forth. So uh, I know that there's some limitations in Google Sheets in terms of the number of cells, right? Um, so it would be more from the database side, but in terms of the processing time, right? Because every time we sync, every time we, we load the data, there are essentially calls that we're making out to these database. So the the Essentially, the smaller the calls, the, the quicker the processing time is. Right? So, um, in terms of the limitation itself, um, you want to check on the database side, whichever source you're using. Um, and you know, if you keep it as small as possible there, and once you uh, integrate it with AppSheet, the in terms of processing, it would take us less time to to, uh, to process that data. Well, thank you so much. All right, sweet. Um, so we just went over the, the outline of the structure. Um, so let's let's jump into Google Sheets and see how this maps over. So I created a Google Sheet with uh, these four tables. Um, 
no, once you use this outline, you can essentially just take these columns and then just place it into, you know, directly into Google Sheets. Right? Um, you can see here that this is our, our customer orders table with the unique order ID. So every row has unique IDs, right? Um, and then in terms of our foreign keys, these three, uh, these doesn't have to be unique, right? Because they're just referencing another table, but in their respective tables, they should be unique. So if we look at the products table, you see that these chair IDs are unique IDs, right? And you look at the customer tables, these IDs are unique. Uh, look at the sales table, this is all unique. Um, so yeah, these foreign keys are just mapping to those tables, but those tables, within those other tables, within the dimension tables, you wanna make sure that they're, they're unique IDs. And then uh, included the order date, the product quantity, and then the total cost. So once you uh, once the sheet is built, um, you could then upload it into uh, App Sheet by so this is our App Sheet editor. You could do so by going to Data, add a new table, right, and then select your data source and upload that sheet over it. And so let's look at the the how how the customer orders table look within App Sheet. Right? Um, so once you upload the data into App Sheet or integrate the data source with that with, with app sheet um, this is where like the intelligence part come in where we will recognize the types right so uh, we would recognize that there are date fields and numbers and text right we'll we'll, we'll recognize that for you but um, the good rule of thumb here is that once you upload a table just make sure that your data types uh, um, are are accurate so I'll just skim through that list um, the other thing that we'll detect for you is the primary key, right? We, we'll look at the data source and notice that, okay, these order IDs are unique. So let's make them uh, primary keys in the table. So this key column will be uh, enabled for you. And then as for the foreign keys, we, uh, we won't pick that up um, automatically. So you have to change the type of those foreign keys to ref. So this is essentially saying, okay, use the sales associate ID in this table to reference another table right? and in order to connect with that other table you have to click this edit button on your left and go to the source table field and just indicate that you are pointing to the sales associate table so if you're looking at the sales associate table here right pull them both up at the same time right so we're saying okay sales associate id is a reference column pointing to the sales associates table right? and uh, when there's a ref uh, column pointing to a, a certain table, actually will automatically only do the mapping with the primary key, right? So in this case, the sales associate table has the sales associate ID as the primary key. So we'll do that direct mapping only to this primary key. And that means that you, these two column names doesn't necessarily have to be the same, right? Um, it could be a different name. We just know that whatever this ref column is pointing to the sales associate table, it will automatically only be mapped to the primary key. Um, so you could change it, uh, the, change the names around. I, I just have it here so you can see like the direct relationship. Um, so that's how the, the table or the, the structure is gonna look in, in App Sheet. So if we decided to build an orders detail view, right, just to keep uh, track of, um, you know, the, the order description and looking to each of these records. Uh, you notice that, yes, we have the order ID, right, from this field. And then you have the sales associate ID, product ID, and customer account ID. Um, you might ask, like, why is the name of the associate showing up here, or the product name, or the customer name showing up? Um, the reason behind that is that since these columns are referencing the, the record, right, in these other tables, uh, it will um, show up, uh, it, it will present the, the label, whichever the label field is for that table, it will show up here, right? So since we mark name as the label, you see Suzanne showing up, right? Because that's the, the salesperson that we're referring to. Um, but let's say you wanna add other fields, right, um, to the label, like the title, you could add uh, the sales associate, um, title there or the manager, right? So um, it's just whatever that, that label field is you have there. And similarly with the product table, right? These, the name and the picture 
or the image is uh, our, our label column for for the other table. And Fong, a question that came in uh, was around changing display headlines. And um, just for our audience, can you clarify exactly what a label is? Yeah, so you can think of a label as um, it's like the what that so it's these other tables essentially they hold objects, right? And the label just shows just tells you uh, what which, what field do you want to represent that object by. Um, and so in this view, you're essentially the label for that object is the name. But if you go to let's say the form view and you have like drop down columns, which we will go into, um, that label will represent that object as we select the items. Um, so it, it's just you can think more of like a preview to that object, if anything. And then your show column there, that's meant to show um, like, like a label, for example. Uh, the show column here um, indicate whether or not you want that column to sh to actually show. It's not showing the label, right? So let's say um, for the customer order, right, it, which is shown here. If I turn off that show column, uh, to, yeah, show feature, then we wouldn't show it in this view. So do you want it to be hidden or do you want it to show? And a lot of the time, um, like IDs, you we tend to hide those, right? We don't, we don't want to like just have an obscured um, series of numbers and uh, and characters. Um, it just helps with the aesthetic of the app. So in this case, we decided to show it. Perfect. And Thank you. Stuff that's, that's private that you might want to keep, like let's say email, uh, contact emails that you might not want to show, right? stuff like that. Perfect. Thank you. And if we didn't address that question, um, please ping me again, and I'll make sure um, we get a better answer for you. Cool. Thank you, Fong. Um, so once you have uh, the reference built, right, and if you want to know more information on a given sales associate or product, you can simply click this arrow here, and it will go to that that object, that, that sales associate object or that product object, and you can learn more about, um, right. so in this case, you, you know, you want to know more about Suzanne, you can see her sales associate ID, her title, uh, her manager here, and similar with the product, you want to go deep into the product, you can see the price, right, the product ID, and then similarly with the customer accounts, you can click in there and get more information um, about like their uh, email address or uh, billing, shipping address, membership, and so forth. And the, the other thing that was pretty neat, that's pretty neat um, is that when actually to detect a, uh, a reference column, we'll automatically do a, a reverse reference. So you can see here that let's say the sales associate table. And you can see that there's we automatically put in this virtual column that is doing a reverse reference. It's essentially saying, okay, we want to know um, what like all the orders that are associated to a a given sales associate ID. So if you go to Suzanne here and you click that arrow, you see down here it has all the records of the customer orders that she owns. Right? And you want to learn more about those orders, you can simply click on it and it will, it will go to those orders. Um, and you can get you know, the same information, let's say for this customer account, right? We'll see, oh, what type of orders, you know, Jen place and um, you know, what type, who she's working with on the sales side and so forth. Um, and if you don't, it, this that view will automatically show up, but if you don't want it to show up, you could simply see the show button. You could just turn it off and it'd be removed. So that's that's where like that 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 show feature comes in. If you want um, certain certain columns showing up, you could set that here. So let's keep it on here in our case. Okay. Um, we also created a form view out of the customer orders table to actually add new orders, right? So th this is kind of getting back to the, the, the label question which we previously had. Um, so in order to add a new uh, order, you create this, this form view and um, you can see that this is for you, for the user to fill in, right? And um, another thing that you take advantage of is uh, the initial values, right? So these are essentially saying for a new addition to a row, what are some additional values? So for um, 
for uh, the order ID, we will automatically generate the unique ID here. Right? So you don't have to, or the user wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, but then you, you notice that the sales associate uh, product customer accounts are all drop down uh, menus. So if you were to click on the sales associate, right, this is where the label comes in. Like, what do you want um, that, you know, sales associate objects be represented as? So in this case, we want it just by name, right, which is the, which makes sense, right? Um, similarly, if you want to look at the product, right, you want the product name as the label to represent that, 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 that product object. So say we, you know, click sales social associate, pick a chair, um, and I'll be buying a chair. And uh, in terms of uh, um, the product quantity, you could add, you know, how many chairs you want in that order, and we'll automatically calculate the total cost for you. So you might ask, like, where is that calculation happening, and how are we pulling in that information? Um, so if you look to the left here, you see that there's a there's that total cost column. Uh, and within total cost, you see the uh, uh, that there's a formula section where you click on it, you can see the formula that's calculating this. So we're essentially saying, okay, we know the product quantity, right? Which is three in this case. Let's take that and multiply it by the price of the product. So how do we get that pricing? So this goes back to that mapping that we have right here, where we're able to use the product ID to go to the product table to get the price. So we're essentially saying, okay, we have this uh, product ID mapped to the product table. Use this product ID that we selected from up top that product, go to the product table, pull the price, and then multiply it by the quantity, and then you calculate the total cost. Right? So you're able to bring in values from other tables and then just do the calculations here. Otherwise, if, you're not, if you don't have this relationship, you have to add a price column um, here as well. Right? And, um, that means that you have to manually put it in and all that. So, but if you already have that information stored somewhere, you could build that reference and pull that information in and run the calculation. It's very clean, clean setup here. And then we just add the order. Okay. Cool. Um, so that's kind of show you how you could use uh, this, this, data structure to build a different type of views. Right? And um, as Jen alluded, uh, mentioned earlier, um, you can connect multiple data sources. Right? So the, the beauty of it actually is that uh, once the sources are connected and in these tables, we essentially kind of, we, we treat the, um, the structure in a similar way. Right? So show that as an example, I decided to uh, recreate the sales associate table in Google Sheets. Right? I put it into a smart sheet. Same structure, same data, everything. So in this case, um, we go to the customer orders table, and let's say for the sales associate ID reference column, we want that to point to the smart sheet version instead of the Google Sheet version. Right? And we'll save it. And since the data is the same um, and is being uh, integrated into AppSheet, the, the, the app shouldn't change, right, in terms of functionality. Um, so you were, you know, we go back to Suzanne here as an example, same information showing up, um, you know, same uh, reverse reference and so forth. So that just shows that uh, your, your data can essentially live in multiple sources. And, and that, that's very common across the organization, right? You have your sales data living in one place, your HR data living in another place, and they, when you're trying to build a process on your own, you might just want to use Google Sheets, right? But um, so you could integrate all these different data sources, um, and then this single app could access all of them. And then you, you could just once the integration happens, you could treat the tables, uh, you know, pretty much the same um, in terms of like relationships and, and whatnot. Um, so, and that, that I think that that's uh, in our case as well, right? Our data lives in multiple places, um, and uh, oh yeah. You know, it's uh, it could be a mess, but you know, having <laughs> <laughs> having having a platform like you actually to integrate all that and kind of um, use all that different different data sources in, in, in a single processing app is very powerful. 
I always like to mention if you're in uh, operations in particular, like this, knowing this little tidbit, it, it's like it's such a game changer because I know I'm I'm speaking to all the operations people here when I say like you will have 13 different platforms and they all do a different thing and they all hold important data and it's really frustrating to have to bounce back and forth between each one remember which one has a password which one has single sign on like teach onboard new staff how to use it it's such a time suck but understanding that you can access these different platforms through a tool like this it it, it saves you so much time you you get to have a life again is how i, I like to to frame that a little bit um it does give you quite a bit of, of time back so you can focus on other things so that little tidbit alone um, is well worth the hour that you're spending with us today um all right and, and since we're at it here i i actually been playing around with the color picker that, that jen mentioned i think it's, it's just great um just, yeah i use it in this app so if you want to access it access it you could go to the ux tab go to brand and in the primary color field, you could play around with the type of color you want. Um, there's a spectrum you could choose from. And the, the cool thing is that we do the, the contrast for you, right? So if you were to uh, pick like a darker color, you see um, we use like lighter text and you know, color in terms of the emblem, but if you see a lighter color, then we, we'll, we'll change that to make sure that it pops out. Um, I think this is very neat. Um, it allows you to kind of personalize your app to your company uh, colors and, and stuff like that. So definitely play around with that when you have a chance. But cool. Thank you for like, highlighting that. Yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise, yeah, it, you know, to, to summarize um, with the star scheme, I, I think it's a, it's a, a clean way to, to organize your data structure um, to help kind of manage that app, that data. And then as you see, like once you start scaling with an app sheet, right, it could help you grow. Um, your, your usage and manage your data that way. And either way, it's a good way to um, outline before you start building. Because when you start building, um, you have to go back and fix a bunch of things, right? So it's going to make sure you, it gives you like a game plan, right? A blueprint um, that you can work off of. Thank you, Fang. Um, I have some great questions that have come in um, from those in attendance. If you're ready to jump into some questions. Yeah, I. All right. I, um, so this this first one, there might be a little bit of heartbreak uh, in the answer of this, but is there an option to create automatically the star schema uh, as I've made the database without one? No, at the moment we we don't have uh, any, anything that I'm aware of to create that. Um, online, I, I'll, I'll post some resources, but they have um, especially outlines that you could use, and you could just fill it in. Uh, but in terms of like importing that data over to Smartsheet or Google Sheet, um, yeah, you had to kind of manually take that over yourself. Uh, but I know like a lot of, if you're using like SQL database and it, if it's a relational database, uh, chances are it, it has that relationship, uh, relational um, structure built in. Um, so when you access that data, you, you might just have to find like which row, which which one is your primary key, which one's your foreign key. But for a SQL database, that, that structure should be in place. But in terms of like um, Google Sheets, Excel, smart sheet, um, you, you have to just create the outline and then move that over yourself. Uh, and speaking of SQL, uh, regarding Cloud SQL connections to AppSheet, I often only see documentation on my SQL, but can Postgres SQL also be connected? Yeah, I, I believe so. And, um, there should be documentation and uh, we could check with our team um, and we'll, we'll post that in the community. All right, uh, let's go to, uh, is it possible to make a uh, relational from different Google Sheet? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so this, uh, if you go back to this example of Smart Sheet and Google Sheet here, right, is essentially living in two different sheets. Um, so, what we did here is the same relationship, right? We have uh, the sales associate IDs in Google Sheet mapping to the sales associate ID here in the Smartsheet table. So then once you upload these two tables into uh, AppSheet, right? You, now you have access to those tables. And as long as the, the mapping is clear, which we have here, um, sales associate table, uh, yeah, show like you're, you're referencing that smart sheet table. So just make sure that once it's integrated, 
um, you just build that pointer, and it, it should be able to map. Because right? like once that once this data is on AppSheet or integrated with AppSheet, we, we we treat them the same, and you can reference it back and forth. So regardless of where it lives. So you could have two different Google Sheets coming in. Cool. Thank you. Uh, okay. So this this next question is. I think it's a three-parter, maybe a four-parter. So Fong, you and I can uh, kind of tag team this. So okay. uh, the question is, is there an architecture guide for new applications uh, that discusses data placement and using specific data sources based on a data type, uh, such as image, text, video, links, et cetera, and implications in design, performance, and scaling? for small to large number of users, data, et cetera, and or something like best practices. Uh, so Fong, I, I can tackle part of this, and sure. then if yeah. you, you wanna pick up um, the back end of it. So in terms of the general question, um, is there an architecture guide? Uh, kind of, yes. We have a few great art support articles um, that Fong kind of mentioned earlier. One is on data design. Uh, it's actually in the Learn How to Use App Sheet. Uh, we have it available as a PDF, a support article, and the, the same list is also posted uh, within the creator community that you have a link to here. And I'll make sure that resource is posted. Uh, but I think believe it's titled uh, Design Your Data, if I'm not mistaken. So that's, that's one piece to helping with structuring the architecture component. Um, in terms of the image, text, video, um, the data type, that's your columns or your your column type font, I think is what it's called. Um, yeah. right is, is that, yes. And if you click on one of those drop down options, um, like lists or whatnot, so you can see here it says image, file. This is influenced um, by the type of data that you have in a column. So for example, if on your Google Sheet, you have a row that has pictures in it or images or, or however you want to classify it, the title, and if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong because this is nuanced here, um, if the title does not say image, App Sheets Intelligence will analyze that column and mark it as image in your yeah. editor. That's correct, right? Yeah, once you upload your um, your data, we'll, we'll uh, try our best to detect the, the type. Um, like I said, you, you want to do a quick skim to this, uh, this type field, make sure that everything lines up as you expected. Right. So that, that's the um, data type sources piece. Um, in terms of performance and scaling uh, for a small to large number of users, we, we have uh, support articles and resources available on performance and scale. It's less about the number of users you have and it's more about the, um, the size of your data source, whether you're offline or not, um, and how you've structured your data, uh, which is something that Fong touch, touched on earlier making sure it's the shortest possible path to reach a solution with the way you've structured things is really important. That helps your application perform really well. Um, Fong, did you have anything else you wanted to add on? Uh, yeah, in terms of performance, um, you know, if you could limit the number of uh, expressions you use, right, uh, stuff like that could help really help cut it down. Um, and yeah, as Jen briefly, just mentioned, yeah, if you limit the number of columns, that, that would help a lot. If, uh, you know, only want to include columns that are, are absolutely necessary, right? Um, and this is where, like, the start schema could help help you with that uh, as you're building that. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Oh, we've got a lot of questions coming in. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let's tackle this one. In one of my projects in the Google Sheet, the ID is stored inside of the client name. Uh, so reading the Google Sheet is hard. Is there a way to store the name instead of the idea? Or excuse me, instead of the ID? Um, it's, to clarify, is, that, is it something that you're able to separate? Right. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's in, is what, uh, 
what is meant inside the, the username? It, um, is, it, is it concatenated? If so, then I would definitely break out the two, right? That's what we're doing here with the, um, the name and the ID, right? Uh, I have them in two separate columns. And if you're able to do that, um, right, then you could use the sales associate ID to reference the name. And, and you know, it, it, this is uh, what I was referring to um, when I was talking about the dimension table, where these dimension tables could uh, ha contain very few records, but you could add a lot of columns and you'll be okay, right? Those are just information that you, that you could add there. Um, so if you could break that, those two, um, that would be nice. Otherwise, um, I don't know if you have a, just a distinct uh, contact name uh, column already existed, um, but if not, and you know, you could just simply use that as your ID, right? Even if it's like, you know, Rachel Associate underscore one, right? you could still use that as your um, your distinct ID. But if, if you can break them out, like that would be the the best. Cool. Uh, all right. So next one's about unique IDs. Um, I'll ask this question really quickly, and, and Fang, if you're comfortable answer, answering it, go for it. Uh, we did touch on this in an office hour a few sessions ago, and I'll post a link to that session for this specific question. Um, but for the larger group, um, how Fang, how did you create the unique IDs for the table in Google Sheets? How is it automatically generated uh, if a new entry is created? Yeah, so uh, the one that I have here, I just manually put them in, right? Um, but if you go back to our form example, uh, so every, if you were to add a new record, in this case, we're adding a new record for an order, right? Uh, we have a, uh, an expression in the initial value here that tells it to generate a unique ID for every new entry. Um, so you could use that similar fashion, right? If you want to add a form to, um, the, the sales, if you want to add a form to include new sales associates, you can just go here. And then, uh, yeah, just make sure you have the initial value set as unique ID. And, and some, sometimes we'll, we'll automatically put that in for you. Um, so you wouldn't have to worry about generating that unique. But in terms of generating your own data first, this was mainly put in. Cool, thank you. I, oh, this is a good one. Uh, when copying apps between different customers, I sometimes need to change the name of the columns and sheets. What is the best way to do that? Um, you want to talk about regen, maybe? Yeah, I, I think that's the would be the the best uh, way about it. Is yeah, once once you're copying an app, um, and uh, right over here, if you go to the data tab, go to columns, uh, there's a regenerate structure option um so as long as it's connected right and um if you were to make any changes in in your sheet and your your data source you just click regenerate data structure and we'll update uh the column names and the types um of the data source of this table um but then again like once you run the regeneration uh just make sure to go through and, and like everything is lining up uh, but this would be like the pl best place to start to um, kind of restructure that data that, that you're bringing over. Cool. Um, there is a quick question on, um, it, it's kind of a sales question, but I'll address it really quickly about SQL access. So mm -hmm. uh, those that are in need of SQL access, it is an add-on to your plan. Um, neither Fong or myself are salespeople, so we're not the best people to address that question. I would reach out to sales at appsheet.com and they can give you better information. Um, but to my knowledge, it's, it is a an add-on uh, that you pay. If you are somebody that is coming to us from AppMaker, we have a special hybrid plan um, that includes that. Just reach out to our team. But um, for for the broader audience, um, there is an additional, additional cost for that. Um, and I apologize, I don't have super specifics. I just don't want to give you um, wrong information because that would be terrible of me. Um, okay. There are a lot of really good questions here. Let me see. 
Oh, um, all right. This is, I think this is an important one. Can we identify how images or files um, will be named in Google Drive? And maybe Fong, it would also be uh, important to touch on like where that stuff lives uh, if you if you work with it, um, work with files and images and things like that in your application. Yeah, let me uh, let me pull up my drive real quick for that data. Um, in a second here. But it, essentially, um, every app that you create in your in your drive, uh, it will within that folder that contains your app, it would also uh, contain any you know, images or uh, media that you want to upload. So, uh, give me a second here, going through, pulling that. Um, so, all right, found it. So here is uh, essentially the folder that I'm, I'm building that app for. And within it, I have a, a chairs images, right? As you notice in the product uh, tab, I included images of these chairs. So within the folder itself, uh, this is where I'm storing all, the, um, all these images for the chairs. And uh, in order to reference it, you essentially use the syntax here, right? You indicate the table or the, the, the folder and then the name of that image, right? So I wanted to go to the chair, so for this column, go to the chairs images folder and go to the regeneration desk chair. So that's exactly the name of this chair right here. Um, so this is where you you could store the information and then referencing it um, based on your, uh, your um, in your sheet. And you could cheat probably like video and stuff like that in a similar fashion. Cool. Thank you. All right. And we've got just a couple of minutes left. Um, so I'm, I'm going to address one, one last big question here. Uh, it's on educational resources. And I, I'll break this down as, as, as briefly as I can. Uh, so do you have a plan? Uh, for an onboarding roadmap for training, fundamentals, and advanced techniques, possibly with specialist deep dives to integrate different data sources, reporting, application architecture processes, et cetera, and time frame to guide learning journey and path. Um, and, and there's a, a few other pieces here I'm going to leave off for just, just a moment. So in, in terms of learning AppSheet, uh, the, the good and the bad thing about this platform is it's customizable, uh, which means that anybody can use it in whatever way um, they need uh, based on their use case. What's really important to understand and part of the reason why I wanted Fong here today to explain the data structure is the way in which the, the, the better understanding you have of working with your data, the more efficient you will be in your application development, the more quickly you can build applications um, and also the more quickly you can ramp up. We make a general assumption um, that your average individual can become a quote unquote expert in three to four months, but that's a complete product expert. Anybody can build an application as long as they have a couple of spreadsheets with some information in them um, in a matter of a few hours. If you wanna get super complex, there's obviously um, a lot more to learn. So a really good resource to start with is uh, the document that I referenced earlier, which is the Learn How to Use AppSheet resource. There's 10 different resources on there to learn with. The best one to start with is the Udemy course. Actually, um, Fong, can you go back to, I think, the second slide in this deck, second or third? It's the education resources, yeah. So um, there's a screenshot of that particular um, support document there. Check out all of these resources. Um, we are working on more use case specific um, based on feedback from users like you. We've identified uh, several use case buckets that we find are the most common. And so we're starting to create more resources around those. The best way really though to become a product expert in this is just to build. Build, test, post questions in our creator community forum. Um, and attend these office hours. That we found has found made our users very, very successful. Excuse me, our creators very, very successful. And 
going through that repetitive motion um, will really help. If you have any specific questions that you're looking for, uh, feel free to ping me. Um, as I mentioned earlier, and, and just in case you weren't on the call at that time, I am adding an advanced office hours session or an advanced webinar session uh, later as well. So there, there are plenty of resources uh, there for you to use. But the short answer is, or to make a long answer longer, there's not a checklist that you would check when you're learning. Um, it's all based on your needs. So it's a, it's a process in refinement, but there are resources there. Um, Fong, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, I think that's, uh, just to reiterate that point, yeah, I, I learned just pretty much t trial and error, right? Um, so, and definitely use the, the community as a, as a resource to post your questions. Um, and that, that's how like our team also is taking feedback um, and know more about like, you know, early or new app creators and what um, some of the issues are. And we're trying to pump out resources that will help with that. So um, the more apparent those issues, you know, or um, proven points, show up in community, we'll, we'll make sure we'll prioritize that. Because um, you know, like, you know, the, the ramp up period um, could take some time. So we wanna make sure that uh, we, we offer the best support we can for, for new app creators. Absolutely. Um, all right, we are two minutes over. Uh, so I wanna say a quick thank you um, to Fong for joining me today. I very much appreciate your expertise and it's nice to get to talk to you. I don't get to sit across from you uh, oh, at work anymore. Um, so I do, I, <laughs> I miss that. Um, so thank you for joining us today and sharing your knowledge. Um, also, thank you to my dog, Roxy, for remaining relatively quiet. She's getting a treat later for that. And thank you all of you for attending. Please stay safe, take care, reach out and let us know if you need anything. And we'll see you on the AppSheet community. <laughs>